Hello there, what's going on? I'm Bill DeWeese, pro voiceover talent and voiceover career coach. My singular mission as a voiceover coach is to help you become profitable in your voiceover journey. It's fun as a hobby. It's more fun when you make money doing it. So that's what this channel is all about. Thanks for stopping by. And uh, today we're going to talk about something that's very important, something that you should be concerned about if you're getting started in voiceover. It's something that you'll need. You'll need to have, you'll need to understand uh, what it does and how you use it. And it's called a digital audio workstation, otherwise known as a DAW, or oftentimes referred to as a DAW. But before we go any further, let me just quickly remind you to hit the subscribe button so that you get all my latest content. And also, at the end of this video, I'm going to give you the three essential functions that you need to learn when it comes to using a DAW or digital audio workstation. Um, to, I think, put this within context, to understand what a DAW is, maybe it would be helpful, at least for some of you, maybe people who are of a certain age, to talk about what we used to do. When it, when it came to recording. Now, prior to voiceover, a number of years ago, I worked in broadcast, radio broadcast specifically. My background, and maybe some of you remember this or have seen pictures or video of it, and that is reel-to-reel -reel tape machines. So imagine uh, speaking into a microphone, your voice would go into a reel-to-reel -reel tape, and then to edit it, you would need these tools, a razor blade, a white grease pencil, a splicing block, and splicing tape because we would mark the tape, we would cut it with a razor blade, and then we would have to tape it. That's, that is how, not all so long ago, we would edit audio. A DAW is the modern day equivalent, but a digital and much easier way to record and to edit. So I, I, I guess I dated myself there, but for those of you who think in terms of analog, I just want you to get a sense of, of what we're talking about here. A DAW gives you a digital platform that makes it easy and fast to record and edit. Now, I say easy. Obviously, when you're first looking at a DAW or the interface and you've never used one before, it's going to look a bit overwhelming. But rest assured, once you spend a little time, regardless of what platform and what program that you'll use, and we'll talk more about the different programs out there, you will get comfortable and you will learn how to use one. So let's talk about uh, what's out there on the market. What is it you should be looking for? So one of the big hurdles to overcome at first regarding DAWs is which one are you going to use and does it really matter? You know, years ago, people would say, well, unless you're using Pro Tools, you're not a professional voiceover talent. And of course, that's, that's a lot of baloney. Pro Tools is a, it's a great program. And especially if you're recording music, um, I would say for voiceover, it is overkill. Now, if you have Pro Tools, you use Pro Tools already, you know how to use Pro Tools, then by all means, use Pro Tools. But if you have not used Pro Tools before, I would highly recommend that you stay away from it for a couple of reasons. One is it's pretty darn expensive. And the other is there's a lot, there's a lot of functionality, which is great if you're a music producer, but not so much if you're just recording voiceover because most of our work is, is single track audio, mono audio. Now, there are some exceptions to that, but our requirements as voiceover talent are nothing like a music producer who may need 16, 24, 48, 100 tracks of audio. It's a whole different world. So if you've got it and you know how to use it, great. If not, don't worry about it because there's a number of programs out there. The program that I use is Adobe Audition. And by the way, by me stating that I use it, I'm not saying that it's the best. Best is subjective. You know, whatever you learn to work on is, is going to be fine. But that is certainly a viable option. And, and I do like Adobe Audition because uh, it's not... In the, in the grand scheme of things, it's not terribly expensive. It is about 20 bucks a month, unless you're a student, which is like half of that. Uh, I would prefer they had a buyout price, but they don't. So you essentially lease it for, for 20 bucks a month, but it's built with the functionality that you need for voiceover. Uh, not just the basics, but some of the more, uh, uh, I don't want to say complicated because it's not complicated, but more in-depth operations that you can perform on audio that at some point, as you learn the skills that are involved in voiceover, things that you will want to do. So it could, you know, even if you don't start off with it, it's something that you may want to look at down the road. But just let me throw a few other brands out there for you. Um, if you have a Mac, you may already have GarageBand. That's a DAW, a Logic Pro, which is kind of the Apple equivalent of, of uh, Pro Tools. And I'm sure, you know, music uh, mixers and, and engineers are probably arguing at the screen right now as I say that. But it's my point being it's it's a little more of an advanced program for 
of people who are producing music. Uh, Sony Soundforge, I think that's still out there, isn't it? Studio One, uh, Reaper, and then Audacity. Now, I mentioned Pro Tools being at one end of the extreme that if you, you know, if, if you don't have it and you don't know how to use it, don't buy it because it's expensive and it's complicated. On the other side of that spectrum is Audacity. It is free. It's multi-platform. So regardless of whether you're using Windows or whether you're using a Mac or even a Linux system, uh, there's versions for all three of those platforms. And the good news is this. It doesn't matter which platform or software you use in regards to sound quality, because the sound or the audio quality that you get on Pro Tools will be the same that you can get on, on Adobe Audition or Audacity or on Reaper or on any of the digital audio workstations out there. It's a matter of functionality. That's really what you're paying for. You are paying for functionality. So which one should you use? Well, it depends, again, on is there something you already know how to use? If so, that's probably a good place to start. It also depends on budget. If you have a low budget or as a no budget, Audacity would be a great place to begin. But a great thing about most of these programs is that you can get demo versions, that you can check it out and test it and just see how it works for you. And here's something to keep in mind. When it comes to digital audio workstations, it's a lot like using Microsoft Word in that most people only use five to 10% of the functionality. You will probably never need to understand and learn every bit of functionality of a digital audio workstation. I worked in broadcast for a number of years. I've been full-time voiceover for the past 15 years. I don't know the vast majority of the functionality. I, I just don't need to, I don't need to know. I don't need it. I need basic functionality. And that really leads us into, into the three things I really want to share with you today beyond what a DAW is and what you should look for and what's out there and what, you know, what might be best for you. And that is, what are the things that you need to learn in a digital audio workstation? Well, there are three primary things that you need to learn when it comes to your DAW. And by the way, a couple of things. The things that I will talk about, uh, it's beyond the scope of this video for me to go into detail and explain how to do these things. But there are videos on the channel where you can, you can look them up and learn more about them. And also, I have a couple of videos that are very specific to Adobe Audition, which is the platform and DAW that I use, where you can learn more about it. But the first thing that you'll want to learn to do is to record and edit audio. Let me explain. Record meaning taking your voice, the analog signal, your voice, and getting it from your microphone into your computer which uh, depending on whether you use a USB microphone, if you're using a USB microphone, it will be plugged directly into your computer with nothing in between the mic and the computer. If you're not, you may need an audio interface. Again, just look up some of the videos on this channel where you can get a better idea of exactly how that works. But you will need to learn to record audio into your interface and to be able to edit it. And to edit it, I simply mean you need to understand how to cut, paste, take out the bad takes, leave in the good takes. Imagine you're working with, going back to the analogy of a reel-to-reel -reel tape and you're recording a commercial and you start, you don't like it, so you start again. You get to the second line, you flub a word, so you start back from the beginning again and so on and so forth throughout the, throughout the length of that commercial. Well, with that reel-to-reel, -reel, you'd be going back with a razor blade and you would be cutting out the pieces you don't want and taping back all the good pieces together. In a digital audio workstation, we have the advantage of being able to do that with a mouse. We can highlight, we can delete, we can copy, we can paste. It's Think of it this way. Instead of having the reel-to-reel -reel tape and the razor blade and the splicing tape and the grease pencil, we're operating in a platform that's more like Microsoft Word, where you can copy, paste, cut, delete text, but we're doing it with sound waves. And again, that's the, the, the details of that are beyond the scope of this video. You can look it up in other videos within my channel. But that's what we're talking about, the ability to get the audio into the recording and then to do some basic manipulation. Cut, delete, paste. So that's number one. Number two, you need to learn how to equalize the audio. And one of the great things is, is that most, if not all, digital audio workstations have that functionality built into it. EQ, equalization, what does that mean? Well, sound exists on a, a, a frequency sp uh, spectrum where you've got the high frequencies to low frequencies. This is a very, this is a very uh, elementary explanation, but this is the basic of what you need to understand. So from the low frequencies up to the mid and then the higher frequencies. Depending on your voice, 
the microphone and the equipment you use, you'll need the ability to equalize your voice for proper usage in voiceover. Again, beyond the scope of this video to explain how that's done, but there are videos on this channel that will help you with that. So the ability to EQ or equalize your audio. And then finally, and this is what I believe to be, again, I'm talking about the three, there's more than three functions that you can learn, but these are the three that I think are absolutely necessary. Recording and editing, number one. Number two, EQing or equalizing. Number three, adding compression. Well, what does compression do? Well, imagine we're taking, uh, it's almost like when you talk, when you speak, and if you were to see it visually in a DAW, you'll see spikes. Some will be big spikes, or some will be lower spikes. And again, a very, as a very simplified explanation, is that a compressor squeezes and presses on that signal to lower some of those peaks and valleys, and it, it levels things out a little bit more and gives it a little more punch and presence. Uh, I always advise my students to be very conservative with their use of compression. If you're a broadcaster, especially a radio broadcaster, your temptation will be to over compress because it makes it sound bigger and punchier. Most clients don't want over compressed audio. Again, the explanation of that beyond the scope of this video, but that is something that you'll need to learn and understand. And again, I've created other videos to help you with that. So by being able to record and then edit it, EQ it to make it sound uh, proper for voiceover, and then to be able to compress it to to uh, more evenly match the sound waves across across the uh, this the, the the length of the, re the recording will allow you to create professional sounding audio, and those are the three functions that you need to focus on. Now you'll be tempted again to be to 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 be a little overwhelmed at first because when you're looking at a new software program, it can be a bit it can be a little bit scary, and I felt the same way. But what I want to encourage you to do as I do all of my students. And as a matter of fact, I, I had a, a, a group coaching session with some of the students in my voiceover blueprint the other day, and we were talking about this very topic and that uh, it's easy to feel overwhelmed and it's easy to want to give up when you, you know, when you look at a brand new software program and say, I've got to learn that to be able to do the thing that I want to do. You do need to be able to, to learn to do this. But the good news is, is after you, if you spend a little time every day over the course of a few weeks, you'll be able to get the basics after a few months, it will become second nature. So you just have to, to dive in and you have to experiment and you have to play around with it. And it's software, it's audio. So you're not going to break anything. All right. So practice with it, get a program, download a trial version of it, and just begin to mess with it and get your hands dirty and get the feel of what it means to record, to edit, to equalize and compress audio and you will be well on your way to creating great audio for your voiceover career. Now, if you want to tap into some other resources that I have and to learn more about voiceover, I encourage you to go into the description below and you'll find links and you'll find links to the DAWs that I talk about in this video. Also, there will be a link that will take you to learn more about my extensive and comprehensive voiceover training program, the voiceover blueprint, which includes video on demand curriculum, live coaching webinars, almost on a daily basis. Now the ability to participate in my private community and watch me as I work from my studio. It's a, it's a career development program. And if you want to learn more, you can check it out again, go to the description to find all of that. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for checking out the video. Good luck as you introduce yourself to the world of Dawes. Trust me, you're going to love it once you get into it, because this is where the creative process begins where you get your hands into it and begin manipulating audio and making things sound uh, that you, in a way that you never dreamed that you possibly could through the miracle of this modern technology. So good luck with that. Thanks for checking out the video and I'll talk to you soon.